Warning! The following video contains scenes of cartoon nudity, sexuality, and coarse language. Sensitive viewers are urged to use their discretion. But come on, you know you want to watch it. You know, lately it occurs to me that I've featured a wide variety of weird sex on this show. I mean, I've shown cartoon cat sex, tentacle sex, pinball sex, and even Turkish superhero puppet sex. So naturally, there's only one logical place to go from here. Fairy tale sex. I guess. Once Upon a Girl is a 1976 pornographic animated film and was one of several adult animated features made after the success of Fritz the Cat, which was not only the world's first X-rated animated feature, but also one of the highest grossing movies of 1972. Other adult animated movies from the time include The Down and Dirty Duck, Tarzoon Shame of the Jungle, and the oh-so-subtly-named King Dick. But whereas most of those other films were either original or based off of comic books, Once Upon a Girl instead offers up an erotic take on several popular fairy tales, proving that even before the invention of the internet, Rule 34 was fully in effect. Oh, and when I say that this is a porn movie, I don't mean that it's a real movie with a story that just happens to have some sex in it, like Wicked City or even Fritz the Cat. No, 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 no. This is a full-on porn movie. So with that in mind, let's get started. The movie's brought to us by the Producers Releasing Organization, ensuring movies get produced and released no matter how messed up they are. Alright, if you're wondering why I had to black box that, it's because in this movie's universe, even old-timey fonts need to have tits on them. Well, I will say this, for a movie from the 70s, the animation is really good. Oh, wait, I guess this part's in live action. Great, so the movie's mixing live action and animation, because that always turns out well. So the premise of the movie is that Mother Goose, apparently here on loan from a Monty Python sketch, is on trial for a variety of crimes. Looks like it's up to attorney Paul Williams to read the charges. Been charged with disturbing feats, unlawful assembly, and murder. Murder in our most valued children's moralistic teaching. Uh, if murdering children's stories is a crime, then shouldn't the producers of this movie be the ones on trial? Mother Goose's defense is that all her fairy tales have been told incorrectly over the years, and she's now here to set the record straight. In the old days, I was forced to tell the accounts of Little Red Riding Hood, Cinderella, Jack and the Beanstalk, for instance. The way certain chauvinist big shot kings wanted them told. Well, you know. From the man's point of view. <laughs> yeah, those old fairy tales may have been told from the man's point of view, but there'll be none of that chauvinist crap here. This movie's totally got a feminist angle. Well, um, I guess I'd better start at the fucking beginning. <laughs> hey, don't be shocked. That line is one of the only things in this movie I won't have to censor. So the first fairy tale is Jack and the Beanstalk. Because I've always said Jack the Giant Slayer would have been a surefire hit if only Jack had had a three-way with the two-headed giant. And this, kids, is the real tale of Jack and the Bean... Uh, uh, Jack and the Beanstalk. Eh, I don't like this. It looks like we're about to be told an erotic tale about the Keebler Elves. Oh, where is that little crumb snatcher? Jack! Yeah, where the hell is Jack? Oh, there he is. Up in that tree having a staring contest with the ground, apparently. Seriously, what the hell is with the look on his face? <laughs> Actually, Jack's busy spying on a woman washing herself. Because once again, this version of the story is totally not told from the man's point of view. Mmm, yeah, that's some good feminist storytelling. Oh, yeah, who's a strong, independent woman? You are, yeah. Unfortunately for Jack, his frog ends up getting more action than he does. Hello, my baby! Hello, my honey! Hello, my rag on gal! Oh, yeah, this is just what I was expecting from this movie. Nothing hotter than watching some frog human bestiality while a brain dead little boy watches, right? Oh well, I guess some people out there would find this sexy. 
Hey, Jack, is that a banana in your pocket, or is this movie just really fucked up? Well, Jack may not be getting any from the girl, but at least a squirrel gives him some head. <coughs> hey, I said no teeth, goddammit! Oh boy, that milkmaid almost closed out the act that time, Froggy, Froggy, Froggy! Hmm, you know, there's something really familiar about Jack's voice. Can't quite put my finger on it, though. Ah, oh, well, I'm sure it's nothing. Okay, so we saw the frog get some. Does that mean we got the bestiality out of the way now? You know, I'm realizing I owe the Japanese a huge, huge apology right now. Okay, I know he's technically sucking on the cow's nipple, but this looks an awful lot like fellatio. Should I be black boxing this? Eh, better be safe. There we go. Look at that little sucker suck! That kid can suck the nipples off a troll! Oh, come on, movie. Is that the best you can do? You know what? Screw it. I might as well just provide my own dialogue here. Like, wow, I didn't know udders could suffer from premature ejaculation. Jack, what are you doing? Uh, uh Froggy and I were playing a uh, suck ball. Yeah, I can name something else that sucks balls. Look, movie, as riveting as Jack sucking on a cow is, do you think you could maybe cut to something a little sexier? Oh, ye forthwith, I be pimpy, ye forest flasher! Oh, Jesus, sorry I asked. Qu who are you? Uh, can ye not tell? Hast I not heard of dopey, sneezy, grumpy, lumpy, bumpy, and rumpy? Hey, I know them. They hang out with Ho White. So anyway, the dwarf offers to buy the cow, but instead of magic beans, he offers something else. Hey, kid. Ye want to trade thy cow for some dirty pictures? I've got some of Snow White around thy house. Ye would not believe. I'm not trading my bossy for any old bunch of k k kinky pictures. Yeah, just wait a few decades for the internet to be invented, and then you can look up whatever cartoon characters fucking you want. Looks like if Pimpy wants this cow, he'll have to sweeten the deal. Would ye trade for a genuine gypsy princess? Hey, kid. How you like to try these kind of teats? I don't know, could you make your nipples look more like penises? Oh, I'm just kidding, these'll be fine. So we get a sex scene between Jack and the Gypsy, but it's a little hard to find this sexy when they keep interrupting it with the dwarf's cum face. How the hell were people supposed to masturbate to this? I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm still gonna do it, but it's very annoying. Well, congratulations, Jack. Now the other kids at school won't make fun of you for still being a virgin at the age of 12. So just like in the fairy tale, Jack gets some magic beans, although I'm surprised this movie didn't make them magic anal beads. Also, Froggy's apparently now the Hypnotoad. So, ladies and gentlemen, do you want to know how the beanstalk gets created? You're sure you want to know? Okay, here it is. Wow! Watch out, Froggy! I'm... That's all, folks! Nah, just kidding, there's more. So now we have a beanstalk. Or a penis stock. Whatever, they're not attached to a human body, which means I don't have to censor it. Just like this vagina cupcake. Oh, can't you see me? Oh, what? This movie's even trying to make the singing harp sexy? Now that is just wrong. Besides, we all know the Disney version is way hotter. Giant? Uh-oh. Yes, he keeps me captive because when I play my harp, the music makes everybody do naughty things, and it's the only way he gets turned on. Well, it could be worse. He could have to watch Mother Goose porn. God, this movie is so depraved even Jack's neck has a boner. Pretty soon the giant's wife comes back, which means we can add another fetish to this movie, macrophilia. I'll just give you a second to pause the video and Google that if you want to. You back? Okay, good, let's keep going. Things get even weirder when the giant comes back and starts having sex with his wife while Jack's hiding inside her vagina. Now, due to the standards and practices of YouTube and other video sharing sites, I can't actually show you the image of a little boy being pounded by a giant penis while inside a giant vagina, but if anyone out there is curious as to what that sounds like...
Aren't you just learning so much from watching this show? By the way, it's good to know that in the 70s, even cartoons hadn't heard of razor blades. I know you can't see it, but let's just say I'm not sure if that's supposed to be pubic hair or if the animator just left some eraser shavings on her. And then the Giants adopted Jack. Or some shit like that. Whatever, next story. Looks like things are starting to heat up in the courtroom. And is that Huggy Bear as one of the jury? Anyway, what fairy tale are you going to tell next, Miss Goose? Cinderella is the story of a little girl who rode her broom up. Uh, okay. I think the movie just told itself to shut up. Well, Jack and the Beanstalk gave us some hot 12-year-old on cow action. So what sexy images are they going to have in Cinderella? Living in the village was an evil woman named Morta who wanted Fortunato for his money. She tried everything to get his attention, but nothing would work. Oh, God. This movie is for people who find Monty Python animation erotic. The movie does, however, give us some backstory on Cinderella's wicked stepmother, because I'll bet you were all just dying to know about that, right? I will put a spell on him with a magic potion. And I'll get the potion from the Wicked Witch of the Wang! Uh, excuse me, Wang is spelled wrong. Eh, whatever, this is on the internet, nobody gives a shit about grammar. Also, that's totally Witch Hazel. Oh, it is, honey, it is! <laughs> oh, but you got to keep up with Time's Torch! <laughs> Okay, so let's see what she's got for love potions. Drop a little on your sweetie's hunger and... <laughs> oh, look, he's giving that wood some wood. And that's why you always wear protection. Eventually, though, the witch does give the wicked stepmother a love potion. Uh, okay, so the love potion is Rohypnol then, I guess? And when he woke, she seemed to him a beauteous, lustful nymph. Oh wait, never mind. It's just concentrated beer goggles. I guess that'll work. In other news, Cinderella's dad has a baby dick. I've been had! What? This is terrible! He went half-crazed to a faraway country and never returned. Yeah, because that's the right reaction to a bad lay. Well, now that we've got her father out of the way, we can finally get to the Cinderella part. Although knowing this movie, that probably means we'll get a scene where Gus bangs Lucifer. Or maybe we'll just get one with Prince Valiant here. I am sad to report that I have not been able to find a fair princess that I would, should, could, or in any sense of the word, would marry. You know, there's something really familiar about the prince's voice, too. I just can't quite figure out what it is. Oh, man, this is really gonna bug me. Damn, even the posters are getting nailed in this movie. So just like in the fairy tale, the prince throws a ball and Cinderella's stepmother lets Sherry and Scary here go while she has to stay at home. It's a shame too, since apparently Cinderella has the power of breast expansion. Looks like it's up to the fairy godmother to save the day. Now I'm here to see to it that you go to the ball tonight and have a prince. I mean, go to the prince and have a ball. I mean, oh, I hope that you meet the prince again tonight. Wait a second. I think I finally figured out who that voice is. That's Frank Welker, isn't it? Alright, for those of you that don't know, Frank Welker is one of the greatest voice actors of all time. And I guess I shouldn't be surprised that he's in this movie, since according to IMDB, he's been the voice of every cartoon character ever made. Oh, what, you don't believe me? Well, here, see for yourself. I'll call the lieutenant and tell him we have the Golden Galleon. Almost time! but almost doesn't get the job done. Prepare for battle. Operation Warfare. Here's one for the road, Gadget. Think you're on a roll, huh? Well, your luck's just run out. <laughs> and that's just the tip of the iceberg. Honestly, I could just make the rest of this video Frank Welker clips. And because Frank Welker's in this movie, that means I can do stuff like this. Fuck it, you heart of bitch! Fuck it! Ah, the power of lip flaps. Well, how about some horses? I can turn them into mice. <laughs> oh, no time for joking. Now, let me think. What should I do? I say, no, that won't work. I could try that, but oh, gosh, that's silly. I know that would never... <laughs> okay, did they pay Frank in cocaine? Why is he talking so fast? I mean, for me, it's just a piece of cake. 
With these words, a huge cake appeared, which floated about two feet from the ground. The cake made sputtering noises as it started to move towards the door. Okay, scratch that. I think everyone involved with this movie was paid in cocaine. Oh well, at least Cinderella finally found the prince. Someday her prince will come. Oh, come on, you know I had to do that one. I had to! I guess the prince must have come a little too fast, though, because Cinderella leaves right away. I don't even know her name, or where she lives. All I know is that she's a virgin. A lovely, unspoiled, delicate virgin. Yes, a lovely, unspoiled virgin. A virgin who shows up to parties in a bikini and immediately tries to nail the first man she sees. After six weeks and more than 14,000 stops, he still hadn't found one virgin. Well, no wonder you haven't found a virgin. You're looking for one in Once Upon a Girl. Eventually, though, he does find Cinderella. Let's see if the glass slipper fits. And by glass slipper, I mean his penis. The prince touched Cindy's shoulder. Her dress fell from her shoulders and crumpled to the floor. I knew I would recognize you when I saw you again. I'd know those tits anywhere. In other news, I think Cinderella's dead now. Oh, never mind, she's just a dead fuck, I guess. So I take it this means they lived happily ever after, then? Didn't that end nice? Fairy tales always end like that, don't they? Bullshit! Do you want to see what happily ever after was really like? Well, I am making a video on this movie, so... okay. Cinderella started popping kids out of her belly like biscuits from an oversexed oven until her figure was shot. The prince took to fooling around with the local talent and got crabbed. Morta nagged and bitched. The prince bitched and itched. And Brandon sat at home wondering why the hell he had to watch this shit. All right, we got one more story left in this movie, so out with it, Granny. Uh, let's take the case now. That little fart head, Jack and the Beanstalk. Oh, God, the movie's starting over. No! Once upon a time, there was a pretty golden-haired maiden named Little Red Riding Hood. Oh, good. They're doing Little Red Riding Hood. Wait, what did she say there? There was a pretty golden-haired maiden. Yeah, if by golden you mean red. You know, like her fucking name. But perhaps this movie can answer the age-old question, does the carpet match the hood? I've never been to a wedding before, and I have such a long way to travel through the forest. Okay, I know you couldn't see that, but believe me when I say, no, it doesn't. Mm, there. That should do it. There, you got your clothes on. Now you're all ready to take them off again in a few seconds. I'm ready for the wedding now. What? Wedding? I thought you were supposed to be going to Grandma's house. Come to think of it, where's the wolf? The only person I can see is Huntsman Molesty Pants here. By the way, if Red looks confused here, that's just because she's wondering why the Huntsman has a camel toe. And the Huntsman is here to help her, right? Well, I have not a farthing upon my person. Then you must trade. It will cost ye kisses. Ah, the 70s. A time when an acceptable form of currency was sexual assault. Well, looks like we got ourselves another sex scene. Fortunately for me, I know a song that can make this a lot more pleasant. Red saw the trees spinning wildly and changing colors. Uh, okay, so was the guy's dick full of LSD? What the hell is happening? Oh, wh what happened? I think the Huntsman just slipped you some drugs and then forced himself on you. Of course, this movie was made back in the 70s, which means that her reaction to that goes a little something like this. Well, I guess I'm okay. In fact... I feel kind of good in a strange sort of way. You see, ladies, according to this movie, rape can be fun! Halt! Hey. Uh, kind sir, may I please pass? <laughs> Thou shalt pay the price of passage then, sweet miss. Again? Man, medieval toll roads were a bitch. Oh, and that's basically the rest of the story. Red gets assaulted by someone, she walks about ten feet, 
Then she gets assaulted again. Considering all the men in this kingdom seem to be a bunch of creeps who don't understand that nay means nay, I can understand why Red decided to invent dildos. The wedding! Oh my goodness, the wedding! Oh yeah, the wedding! You know what? I forgot all about the wedding too. Probably because you're supposed to be going to Grandma's house! Before she gets there, though, she'll have to get through one more person. Okay, bitch. And just where do you think you're going? Wow, they got Frank Welker and Gay Lorenzo music? Man, this movie has everything. This is my bridge, and you can't cross without paying some kind of passage. So what must I pay to cross your bridge? Well, there's always some kind of sex. Huh, that's weird. I wouldn't have thought Red was this guy's type. You know, because she's a human and he's a troll. What? What did you think I meant? Say, how about a frozen daiquiri? Okay, can we please get to the wedding already? And no wonder it's taking you so long to get there, you keep passing by the same background over and over. She finally makes it to the wedding of Prince Derp here, but oh no, she's not wearing any clothes. I sure hope this doesn't cause any awkwardness. May I kiss the groom? Well, he's about to be my husband, so no! Well, a kiss may be out of the question, but I guess a blowjob's just fine. And that's the story. There's no grandma's house and no wolf. So, you know, Little Red Riding Hood. Now, you could argue that they left the wolf out because they didn't want to depict bestiality, but this movie clearly doesn't give a shit about that. More importantly, they had a perfect opportunity to do an all the better to eat you with joke, and they didn't do it! Back in the courtroom, it looks like Mother Goose's stories have gotten everyone all hot and bothered. By the way, the reason they don't have their clothes off is because they're not actually porn stars. Back in the 70s, everybody just looked like they were one. And they all lived happily ever after. Or Frank Welker did, at least. So, do I recommend this movie? <laughs> Honestly, I'm not really sure how to judge something like this. Really, I think if you hear the description cartoon mother goose porn, that's either something you're interested in seeing or you're not. So if seeing Jack and the Beanstalk suck on some cow titty is your thing, give it a look. I will admit though that hearing Frank Welker's voice in this thing is pretty damn funny. Archibald! Well, that's all for now. Until- Waiteth, fool! Who said that? I did. It is I, Pimpy, the Horny Dwarf. <laughs> oh, great. Well, what do you want? I've come to show ye all the latest cartoon porno. I've got pictures of Snow White having an eight-way with the dwarves. Now you can see Grumpy get a happy ending. <laughs> and that's not all. I've also got some Vampirella bondage pics, too. I hath even got the new Sailor Moon sex tape. Isn't Sailor Moon underage? That whore told me she was 18! Look, I'm not interested, okay? So just take your cartoon porn and go someplace else. Very well. But before I go, I have a joke for thee. Knock knock. Who's there? My dick! <laughs> oh, Jesus! <laughs> God, it looks like a burnt hot dog that got shoved inside a hornet's nest. Hey, let's see how good your wang looks after you contract the troll herpes. Alright, get out! Now! Fine then. Yeah, fucking Canadian bitch ass thinks you could talk to me like that. I gotta start reviewing Disney movies. Weird.